Hello and welcome to WoW's Operation Replays. We've got another review for you and today we have Chuklov. Chuklov, the tier 8 premium Russian carrier. Now, again, Chuklov, one of the most ex extremely overpowered in my opinion, but she does have a fatal flaw. So, Chuklov is basically the Saipan and the Shizong. It has the same kind of play style. It hits hard, but it has, well, a weakness. So let's, uh, what, let's first I'll show you what her, her stats and everything are. So, without the military contributor flag, you'd get 5% to credits, 55 to ship XP, 65 to commander XP, and then 100 with a clan. So not much. Armor wise, she is coated and she does have a decent amount of armor, a 25 millimeter armor. And she does have some good belt armor. But then most of it's just 21 and then she gets a 30 millimeter deck. So that is a little HE resistant. But this holding the ch but her citadel sticks way above the waterline. So she is basically deletable by any battleship. So keep that in mind. Survivability wise, she gets 51,700 and a 25% torpedo reduction. Again, not much for a carrier. Artillery wise, just some big ass secondaries, so not much. But her, her airstrike, one plane. Her AA is one of her best qualities though. So she gets 16 dual mount 37 millimeter guns so these little guys she gets eight 37 mil millimeter vk 46 k mounts which are these little guys quad mounts so basically not bad and then she gets eight of the 130s mounts so basically her artillery mount so she's loaded so she's loaded in the brim with a, A, don't underestimate the A on this carrier. I mean, if you put this thing on Cherry Blossom, Hermes, this thing will kill planes. It will cover your allies. So don't underestimate the, the AA on it. Maneuverability, 32 knots, around 34 with a speed flag. So let's put a speed flag on there so you can see that. 34 knots with speed flag. 100, 1,000, 1,040 for turning circle radius and 13 second rudder shift. Again, stick with the stock rudder shift. There's no point to put a rudder module on an aircraft carrier. Concealment wise, without a full concealment build is 12 or 13.2. So you can get that down a little bit further. So let's look at with concealment with hidden menace. Goes down to about 11.2 plus the concealment module you'd probably be looking at at least around 10 kilometers possibly less so very stealthy carrier that is one of the other gimmicks of the russian carriers are that they are incredibly stealthy when, a, when you when you spec into that concealment now for modules you want to go air groups modification one for that 20 percent Return speed. Air aircraft engines modification one for 10% speed boost duration. And then, since her bread and butter or her main damage dealers are her torpedo bombers, you want to go aerial torpedo speed for the 5% speed boost, 5% to your torps, because these are slow torps. And then, health for your bombers or torpedo bombers, and then. Flight control modification one. Minus five percent aircraft preparation and plus two for maximum of each two on, on the on the plane. Now the reason why I say this build specifically, because when you look at her aircraft regen time, it's about a it's about a minute and a half for each one. And let's go to Saipan and look at hers. So it's about a minute and a half. It's about two minutes for Saipan planes. But let's look at other carriers like Graf. They're pretty similar in terms of Graf, but these are tier 10 planes on the Chocolat. These are Nakamoth planes. 
These are Nakamoth planes, basically tier eight. So it mimics the same kind of play style that Saipan and Shizong have. Hard hitting things with a long um, aircraft preparation time. So every plane you lose, you will feel it. So you want to manage. Um, so you want to have good plane management. Otherwise, you're going to run out. Because if you run out of your torp bombers that with a full strike ability can do around 25,000 with say Zong and say Pine only doing about 20,000 so that's a huge alpha strike that's like a third of any op battleships health that you'd be facing so two strikes hypothetically with a couple skip bombers a battleship's gone so let's say five strikes on a battleship it's gone possibly less so, huge, huge difference. And, there, and the replay that I have chosen shows you how hard these things hit. It shows you literally how all of these planes work and how best to use it. So, let's get into that replay and I'll show you how to best use this Chocolaf. Hello and welcome to the Chocolaf replay. This is Lord Holland4293. Now, Chocolov, great DD killing ship. Easily one of the best. Now, this is basically what I'm going to call Chocolov Review in textbook operation run in a carrier. We've seen it in a cruiser. We've seen it in a battleship. We have yet to see it in a destroyer, but now we have a carrier at it. So first off in a carry, you want to take off and drop fighters immediately. That's your only thing. That's the only thing you got to do in, in the uh, first part as a carrier. And use your AA to help shoot down them. That's literally all you have to do in the first half. In this part right here. Once you do that, you can go whatever. <laughs> Having some nice good team. Good luck. Have fun team. Good morning. Good morning here. It's 2.30 a.m. <sighs> Man. Commitment there for the Richelieu. Now he is a stock Richelieu, but you see how my planes just basically, or my fighters basically just shred those planes and knock out all their health, and my team just picks up the rest of the kills. One of the quickest plane kills that I've seen. I decide, you know, since Shokolov's a good DD killer, I'm gonna go straight for the DDs. One, I know DDs are always, I always stress that DDs are good XP, and I know that's what's needed, because the DDs are what's going to kill this team, so I know I have to go help and kill this team, and I hover, and then I go right in. I use my big bomber, these little bombers here, because I can get a more accurate strike. And again, 6,000, but I mean, it adds up, and I bring on, bring on my little bombers again. Now, Chocolove is a very, like I, like I said in the opening part, it has tier 10 planes, so like Saipan, you have to be very cautious when playing it. And you'll see me ex save my Torp Bombers. I'm not going to use my Torp Bombers until I absolutely have to. I'm going to use the two squadrons I can be a little bit more expendable with. Again, another bomb hit. That's about up to 8,000 damage. And a Permafire. So, and I pick up that Z23, so 8,500 damage, and I bring out my skip bombers to go in for the other DD now. That way it gives, that way I rotate my squadrons, give my other bombers time to recover. Again, they're most active, these bombers, skip bombers are accurate on the second line. That was a bad drop. Not my best drop. But I still get about 5,000, over at least 5,000 damage with two bombs. I'm gonna bring up the other ones. Okay, going in. And again, not much, but it is a fire, and it does stick. So it's a win-win. And I get a nice with one bomb hit. So right there, the first wave, I'm up to 18,000 damage. And all of that's in DD damage. So that's Great XP. Now most other K 
carriers can't really do that. The, that's why the Chalk and Lava is such an amazing DD killer. And I'm using the Skip Bomber because I know they're going to go through that channel. So, I can go for it. Three bomb hits, 7,000 damage on that DD. So, it all adds up. And you just see our team is doing a really wonderful job focusing these guys down. I could have probably used my skip bombers again and gone after him because he wasn't brought side. Yeah, I should have had the skip bombers first, but, you know, I was just trying to alternate my planes, like I say. I'm trying to go in for a drop bomb. So, basically, I tried it, and then I drop it right on top. And then pull the planes back immediately, so I don't lose them. But I didn't, but I didn't do too well. Sometimes when you're using those other bombers, it's best, yes, you can line it up, but sometimes dropping it not fully green is also a good thing. Sometimes it's better just to do, to just drop small little chunk damages across the board and just do that. Now these are tier 10 knack torpedo points. That's why I'm saving these guys. These are the big damage dealers. So I have to save them. That's why I'm rotating them out, skipping between the skip bombers and everything. Because I know the skip bombers I can launch. And basically, now I get about 13,000 damage right there. And I'm going to get another torp hit. So, five torps out of six. That's not bad. And then I don't just keep alternating between the bombers. Letting my torp bombers kind of have a little bit of leeway to repair it. So now I can just launch from the furthest distance with these skip bombs. So I can live in my AA. I might leave them one bomber per run, but it's better than losing like two or three torps. Now my torps are fully reloaded, and I send out one more wave. Is that enough? I was I was so busy going after the battleships I wasn't even paying attention to the chat. Honestly, I have no idea what they were talking. Something about the Inosio being too close, I guess. And I mess up that bomb drop, that torp drop. I get one torp. But you see, the Sarnorse is just on fire. Sarnorse is going down. He's got two fires, and he's just being farmed to death. And I decide, you know, let's go for the turret because the turret, because the other ones are going down, and there's no point for me to go. But you see that all that black, yeah. I'm gonna lose probably two bombers on that one. Yeah, I lose like two. So I have to be, you know, be aware of what I'm putting out there. I'm gonna get a few torpedoes on this guy too. He TCP to five or the flood, so that's always a good sign. Again, I was really hoping to get some fires, but I think the DCP was still active. And I drop fighters, and then I wait and I activate my priority sector to help get these planes down. Because again, like Chocolate has amazing AA. It has a really decent AA. Don't underestimate the AA on this thing. And... I just needed a little bit more head. I would have gotten all those torps. It's whatever. It happens.
Again, this I would have rate Chocolop as being an advanced carrier. Yes, she's extremely easy to use, but she's also very um, temperamental. Uh, I decided to pull my all my planes back and launch skip bombers because I know that those be launch my other bombers because I know I want my skip bombers to kind of repair because I know they're gonna be base. I just couldn't seem to make up my mind on my. I, uh, I was like, I know I wanted to go for skip bombers, but I want. But I finally decided to go skip bombers because guys, these DDs are coming in sideways. So my skip bombers are the best tool. Anytime you got like DDs like this, go for the skip bombers because you can just destroy any DD with them. Get incapacitation. I mean, our Gupasa is most likely going to go down, which is unfortunate. And I detonate that DD with one bomb, so that's about 6,000 more damage on for me. Yeah, Gupasa's taking torps. I honestly don't know why he went out there, but. Whatever. Again, looking at my planes, yeah, they're still a little unhealthy, but they're still pretty strong. I just gotta manage them right now. I get four torps, and the flood picks up the Baron, so that's another kill. And I immediately set my care to the waypoint for the runes evac, because that's where I'm going. And our team is, well, we've lost Gukasa, but there's, our team is still pretty full health. As you can see, our battleships are in decent position. That's bad for our Fuso. And Kilwatt saying I need a cruiser to go north with me in the Alabama. Do you guys need me? Because I think Rishlu was thinking the same thing. They're going to cut off and going to go for the CV. So I just pop my fighter and I just start hovering. Because the CV's there. So I just was like, all right, let's go ahead and just keep this guy spotted. If we can keep him spotted, then my guys can just keep shooting him. And I just, just keep... Sometimes being a CV isn't about doing damage. It's about just spotting. And one, this is one of the best ways to do it because you're out of range of those two cruisers. So you can just make loop-de-loops around it. And they and you'll just keep it spotted. And just I'm just keeping him spotted for my... For my allies, and they're just shooting it. Because everyone has trouble. They always focus on the Prince Oigan and the Hipper, but if you have a carrier, you can easily take out that carrier. I mean, he spots it, and then you can shoot it. Now, I know it's still in visible range, so I decide to move up and use my torque bombers. They're still pretty healthy so I can use them. I should have dropped the fighter back farther, but it happened. If I hadn't lost like those two bomb uh, like those two planes, I more than likely would have killed the carrier. Because I get four bombings and leave it on 677. If I had just one more torpid, it would have gone down. Now my allies pick it up. Great. Awesome. Now I decided to go for the DDs. I just aim as far ahead and I just drop them. I don't really care if I hit anything. I'm just trying to get these guys down because I know this is the worst part of the off is where people fail. 
Can I do get a torp on the mob? So it's not a complete waste. I mean, you always want to hope for more torps, but whatever. And our St. Louis and our Charles are still alive, so that gives our team time. Because if those two cruisers die, then it makes this part a lot harder. Fortunately, we were able to keep these guys alive long enough. And at this range, you know, the chocolate is vulnerable, but you can keep launching your planes off so fast, it doesn't really matter. And I see that the, the two cruisers have got it. And I know our Nuremberg, our Killwatch down there in the Alabama, he's having a little bit of trouble. So I, I decided to drop close on this Nuremberg. And just Citadel it. Apparently you can Citadel a Nuremberg with skip bombers. Now, we do lose the St. Louis. And our other and the Charles picks up. So basically, right there and then, um, all the ships that are going to give us a headache are gone. Now it's just this Z29 and Weimar. And at this point, I'm just trying to do what I can, just humping the border and just trying to fight. But I'm just not getting the attack time. So. But if I can draw any, any of the torps as possible, then the carrier, then the Ruan is safe. Fortunately, that wreck for the Charles was there, and that's most likely what saved us. If that wreck hadn't been there, it more than likely would have killed the Ruan. So we got real lucky there. But I mean, a solid five star op in a carrier with a, with a pure random team. You can't beat that kind of matchmaking anymore, folks. And I complimented every one of these guys. These guys did an amazing job. Amazing job.